So this final part of the tutorial is on the muscles of the posterior compartment of the thigh. So there's only three muscles that you need to know in this compartment, and these muscles are all innervated by branches of the sciatic nerve. So if I just remove the gluteus maximus, you can see the sciatic nerve running into the posterior compartment of the leg. So it emerges underneath the piriformis muscle in the greater sciatic foramen, and it runs into the posterior compartment of the leg to supply these three muscles. So these muscles um, all act at the hip and the knee joint, apart from the short head of the biceps femoris muscle, which I'll come on to talk about in a bit. But these muscles extend the hip joint and flex the knee joint. So you can see these deep gluteal muscles here. So you've got the superior and inferior gemellus and the obturator and turnus muscles, and you know that they originate a little bit above the ischial tuberosity. So if I just remove these for the time being, you can see the origin of the muscles of the posterior compartment. So these, these muscles are collectively known as the hamstring muscles, and they all originate, apart from the short head of the biceps femoris muscle, on the ischial tuberosity. So you can see how I've just isolated the hamstring muscles, and you can see the position on the sacrum. So we're looking posteriorly, obviously, at the sac um, sorry, the pelvic bone, and you can see the ischial tuberosity here, where the hamstring muscles are inserting. So the first muscle is the, this one here, the biceps femoris muscle, and this lies laterally. And it's got two heads, as the name suggests, so the word biceps means two heads in Latin. So remember the biceps muscle in the arm has two heads along the short head. It's the same for this muscle, except this is the biceps femoris muscle, so the two-headed muscle of the femur. So the long head of the biceps femoris muscle originates in the ischial tuberosity, and the short head, which is here, you can just see it um, beneath the long head, originates on the lateral lip of the linear aspera on the femur. So I'll just isolate these two muscles so we can take a closer look at them. So you can see that both heads converge to form this common tendon, and it inserts onto the head of the fibula. So you can see, so we're looking anteriorly here, fibula laterally, so you can see how the biceps femoris winds obliquely across the posterior compartment, originating on the ischial tuberosity, and then inserting onto the head of the fibula. So this muscle flexes the leg at the knee joint, and it also extends and laterally rotates the thigh at the hip joint. And it can also laterally rotate the leg at the knee joint when the knee joint is slightly flexed. So these muscles are obviously innervated by the sciatic nerve, but the long head receives innervation by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve, whereas the short head receives innervation by the common fibular branch of the peroneal nerve. So the biceps femoris muscle lies laterally, and you've got these two muscles, the semitendinosis and the semimembranosis, which lie immediately. So a way of remembering this is that semimembranosis M medial and the semimembranosis and semitendinosis go together. So the semitendinosis is also medial, but the semitendinosis has the letter T in it, so tendinosis sits on top. So you've got the membranosis and ten semimembranosis and semitendinosis medially, with the semitendinosis sitting superficially, so it sits on top of the semimembranosis. So again, this muscle, the semitendinosis, sits, um, so it originates on the ischial tuberosity, and it descends um, to insert just behind the insertion points of the gracilis muscle and the sartorius muscle on the medial aspect of the upper tibia. So again, what this muscle does is it extends the hip joint and it flexes the knee joint. And it's innervated by the um, tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So finally, you've got the semimembranosis muscle. So this muscle sits under the semitendinosis. And it originates again on the ischial tuberosity. And it inserts down here. So it inserts also on the medial condyle of the femur and also on the medial, medial condyle of the tibia. And it also blends with the joint capsule of the knee. Sorry, the fascia that surrounds the knee joint. So it also so it inserts also some of the fibres that come off this tendon blend to join the, the fascia that surrounds the knee and also it contributes to some of the ligaments around the knee. So you can see here um, its insertion posteriorly on the medial condyle of the tibia and the medial condyle of the femur. So this muscle, um, it flexes the knee joint and it extends the thigh at the hip joint um, and it also medially, medially rotates at the hip and the knee joint. So it acts together with the semitendinosis. I forgot to add that the semitendinosis also medially rotates um, at the hip and knee joint. So these muscles work together. So again, this muscle is innervated by the um, tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So those are the three muscles that you need to know in the posterior compartment. So it's quite simple, the posterior compartment.